welcome to West Country Wanderings and welcome to Chosen Hill or as it's sometimes known Churchdown Hill here in Gloucestershire just a couple of miles outside the city of Gloucester and close to the village of Churchdown we're also not far from Gloucestershire Airport now coming here today is actually a request from one of my subscribers Although I was vaguely aware of this hill, Churchdown Hill, seen it many times, looking down from Crookley Hill and the other hills as we walk along the Cotswold Escarpment where we were doing the Cotswold Way, I'd never actually been here before. I found out there are lots of connections to famous composers, and I'll tell you the story about that in a bit. But also, I contacted a family member, just mentioned in passing that I was coming to Chosen Hill, and that opened up a whole new avenue because there is a big personal family connection to this hill and my family and I'd like to share that with you and there's a very particular reason why I've launched this video on this day. I'll tell you some more. Now there are two nature reserves on Chosen Hill. One is managed by the Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust. It's some 11 and a half hectares, so a fair size. There's also this one, which is a woodland trust, beautiful woodland here. You can hear some birds and I can pick up that. Just to let you know, we're above the M5 motorway. We're also close to Gloucestershire Airport. So there may be some planes and road traffic noises, but uh, kind of have to live with that. But uh, aside from that, it's a very beautiful and peaceful place. Now, Chosen Hill was a favourite haunt of early 20th century classical composers like Ivor Gurney and Herbert Howells. Howells composed his piano concerto in A minor here. He also composed Chosen Tune, which was dedicated to his fiancée, who lived nearby, just to the bottom the foothills of Chosen Hill, in the village of Churchdown. Now the composer Gerald Finzi actually spent New Year's Eve, appropriate enough, we're only in early January here in January 2023, but this was back in New Year's Eve of 1925. In fact, he spent New Year's Eve at Sexton's Cottage just below St. Bartholomew's Church, which we'll have a closer look at a bit, and that's where my family's story is too. In hearing the bells, upon hearing the peeling the bells ringing out New Year's Day, he was inspired to write a piece of music called In Terror Pax. He also wrote an orchestral music after hearing those bells as well. That's a lot from just uh, hearing New Year's Day peeling bells, which he subtitled New Year's Music. Now, many years later in 1956, Gerald Finzi brought his friend Rafe Vaughan Williams, yes, another famous Gloucestershire composer from the village of Dan Antley, and that's certainly one we'll visit on a future episode here on West Country Wanderings. Anyway, he brought Rafe Vaughan Williams here. They both entered the cottage. Now, the cottage had several children living it in 1956, and sadly, after that visit, Finzi caught chickenpox. Unfortunately, he was already ill with Hodgkin's lymphoma, and because he caught the chicken pox on top of that, he sadly died just two weeks later. Now, if you look down there, you'll see that it's very, very green. Mosses and lichens flourish in the area. And the reason for that is that this hill, Chosen Hill, has a particularly heavy rainfall. And that's because of the associated hills around it. When clouds pass over, they drop the precipitation on top of the hill. To take advantage of that, in the late 1940s, they built a reservoir here to provide water for the town of Cheltenham. And in the 1950s, they built another one to provide water for the city of Gloucester, just three miles away from here. 
close to both those reservoirs is a site of a former Iron Age fort. Let's see if we can have a closer look at that too. Now the cultural connections here on Chosen Hill don't just end with the classical composers, they come right up to date, well certainly within the past 10 years ago, with a gentleman called Willard Wigan. Now he's a really interesting artist because he specialises in what's known as microscopic art. And in response to a challenge from his girlfriend, he took a tiny grain of sand from the churchyard here, some Bartholomews just over the way, we'll have a look at that again shortly, and took it away. And this is just sounds completely unbelievable, but it is true. He carved a perfect model of the church and the churchyard onto that grain of sand. Now, I can't imagine that. I haven't seen an image of it. If I can find an image of that sculpture that on that grain of sand, I'll put it in now. But if I can't, you'll just have to try and visualize it. I know it's difficult though that is. His girlfriend was delighted with the work, but he remained dissatisfied, saying that his work was too big. So if you just follow the access road that the people, should I say, Seven Trent Water specifically, that look after the two reservoirs here, it is a public right of way along the road, but you can't drive along it. You come to this part of the Woodland Trust, and this is where the site that the Iron Age fort was. In fact, you can still see the embankments there behind me. Now, I'd like to share with you a personal family connection to Chosen Hill that I've only just found out about. As I say, I mentioned as an aside that I was coming here to my aunt, thank you Andy, and she provided with me a lot of information. When I parked my car at St Bartholomew's Church, I walked over to St Bartholomew's Cottage by the side of the cottage is a gravestone. I'll tell you more about the gravestone and who it was, but simply it's my great-grandmother, my great-grandfather are buried there, but also their son who died in 1945. And I'd like to tell you the story of that now because the anniversary of death is on the 15th of January. The afternoon of the 14th of January 1945, five at half past four in the afternoon from RAF Skellingthorpe in Lincolnshire a Lancaster bomber took off with plans to bomb a synthetic oil refinery in Germany. Unfortunately things didn't go to plan. On that night 573 Lancasters took part in two complete raids. Lancaster LM720 was one of those that took off and took part in the raid. And it was on the return flight that things turned a bit askew. Poor weather meant that the air crew were advised to go to Carnaby near Bridlington in Yorkshire and land there instead because of the wind and the fog on that particular evening. It was now in the early hours of the 15th of January 1945. Now though RAF Carnaby had FIDO in place, that's fog intense dispersal operations, for some reason the aircraft decided to head for Langham Airfield in Norfolk. The aircraft was now heading to land in very poor visibility indeed. Sadly on the approach at 200 foot it hit a radar mast and the Lancaster bomber crashed to the ground, killing all of the air crew on board, including one Edward known as Teddy Bokes, who is my great-grandfather and great-grandmother's son. And he lost his life on the early hours of the 15th of January, 1945. And this video serves as a tribute to him. And also all of the air crew that lost their lives that night on that Lancaster bomb.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tour here at Chosen Hill in Gloucestershire with its history of the classical composers, the creative artist, and also the personal family connection too. Love to know what you thought of it. As well as putting a comment on YouTube, you could also join my Facebook group, also called West Country Wanderings. Just search for it on Facebook and request to join the group. I'll invite you in. And there you can also share your own photographs and own recollections and videos if they have a West Country connection. I'd love to hear from you. And also if you've got any memories at all about people that fought in the Commonwealth Forces in World War II. Thank you very much for watching West Country Wanderings today. Take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and I hope to see you on the channel again very, very soon. All the best for now. Bye-bye.